This is a, uh, a total team effort by uh, VDOT, the uh, state police, local police departments, uh, and as well as uh, each of the uh, trucking companies and their drivers. Uh, our main issue is safety. We want to make sure everybody's in compliance with all state and federal regulations. And, and you just have your bases covered. Uh, for the general public, it's safety. It's safety for everyone. I feel like training is very worthwhile. It gives us a camaraderie uh, with VDOT and the contractors being able to come out and talk to contractors directly, talk to VDOT directly, see what problems are coming from either side, and then we get to get involved too. So it's going to be a working relationship now and hopefully grow greater in the future between contractors, VDOT, and ourselves. This video is designed as a resource and general guide to help VDOT personnel effectively use the revised equipment checklist while inspecting vehicles for snow removal service. Contractors are strongly encouraged to inspect their own equipment and mitigate concerns prior to VDOT inspection. Heavy trucks are expensive to operate, and some owners may cut costs by foregoing proper maintenance, registration, and insurance requirements. For the safety of the public and contracted equipment operators, all equipment must be inspected by VDOT before it can be contracted for snow removal service. If a vehicle fails your inspection, it's important for legal and liability reasons to document the reason for the failure in the comment section of the checklist. For efficiency, consider inspecting all components visible from the ground as you walk around the vehicle. Then inspect all components accessible from the driver's seat in the cab. Position yourself where you can clearly see the entire front of the rig, including the plow, as well as the driver's side of the rig, including the spreader. Hold your phone very still and take a sharp picture. Move around to the opposite corner and take a sharp picture that shows the entire back and passenger side of the rig. Carefully inspect and photograph the registration card. Forgeries can be sophisticated. Look for handwritten or misspelled words. Check the expiration date and make sure it has not been tampered with. Vehicles registered as farm use vehicles do not meet regulations for unlimited highway use and cannot be contracted. There must be a license plate on the front and on the rear of the vehicle. Compare the registration card to both license plates and make sure everything matches. The plates must be displayed properly, visible, and unobscured. Take a picture of one of the plates. Look at the VIN number on the vehicle. It should match the VIN number on the registration. Take a picture of the VIN number. If you can't find a VIN number on the vehicle, Make a note in the comments section and contact your residency administrator or district maintenance manager. Inform the owner that the vehicle will not pass inspection until the VIN number and registration can be verified using a police database. Vehicles registered in Virginia must have a current state inspection sticker and the receipt for the sticker must be with the vehicle. If the sticker looks like it's been peeled off or tampered with in any way, check to make sure the number on the inspection sticker matches the sticker number on the receipt. Also, check to make sure the receipt matches the vehicle. Vehicles from other states must have valid and current safety inspection and registration documentation from the state where the vehicle is registered. Vehicles registered in states that do not require a yearly safety inspection must be inspected in Virginia and have a valid Virginia State Inspection sticker. Owners of equipment must have proof of valid insurance. Write the name of the insurance company and the policy number on the form. The required lights are headlights, tail lights, stop lights, flashing amber auxiliary light, and turn signals. All lights must be DOT compliant, working properly, and visible to other motorists and pedestrians. When inspecting lights, stand back and view them from where other motorists would see them. 
all headlights and turn signals must be visible with the plow up or down. Some vehicles have two sets of headlights. Only one set of lights can be illuminated at a time. Check that the spreader does not obscure the tail lights or rear turn signals. If the equipment has a rear spreader light, it must be pointed downward. Spreader lights must not shine into the eyes of following motorists. The vehicle must have a flashing amber auxiliary light that is visible from 360 degrees, as viewed from another vehicle. The light must be amber only. White lights or amber-white combination lights are illegal. The VDOT-approved Keep Back 100 Feet sign must be installed securely and visible. The vehicle must have operational wipers and an operational window washer fluid system. Mention to the operator that VDOT strongly recommends the use of winter-type wiper blades. The vehicle must have an operational horn. It can be either a city horn or an air horn. The vehicle must have an operational backup alarm. The bed of the truck must be level and free of any structural damage or corrosion that could cause the spreader to shift or come loose. It should also be free of debris, tools, or other materials that could slide out during operations. Check for major fluid leaks around the inside and outside hubs and around the brake drums and calipers. Also look under the truck at the end of your inspection. There should be no fresh puddles larger than about four to six inches in diameter. Tires must be in good, serviceable condition with adequate tread and no major gashes. Company identification placards must identify the actual company that's on the contract. The placards must be legible and firmly attached to both sides of the vehicle. If the placards are the magnetic type, inspect them for good adhesion. The plow must be installed properly with no modifications. It must be able to move up and down and from side to side. Hydraulics are not required, but the plow must still function properly. The plow must also be large enough to protrude beyond the width of the vehicle's wheels. The spreader must be secured at four points with straps, chains, or bolts. There must be no user-created modifications, such as attached boards for increased spreader capacity. Manufacturer-supplied accessories are acceptable. Have the operator turn on the spreader. It should function properly. From the driver's seat, inspect the windshield. There should be no major cracks, shattering, or obstructions blocking your view. The defroster must work properly. If necessary, remind drivers to remove any clutter that may be blocking the defroster vents. Check the mirrors. There must be a clear, non-cracked mirror on both sides of the vehicle. Dual mirrors on the same side do not count as two separate mirrors. There must be a separate, non-cracked mirror mounted on each side of the vehicle. Both doors must open and close properly. Both door windows must open and close properly. All contracted vehicles must have an official manufacturer's gross vehicle weight rating metal plate or sticker. This GVWR rating must match the GVWR rating on the registration card. No other stickers are valid. A vehicle can only have its GVWR downrated by the manufacturer, who will then place a valid downrated sticker on the vehicle. If the GVWR rating is greater than 26,001 pounds, circle the yes on the CDL vehicle line. Virginia law now states that military vehicles purchased after January 1, 2019 are restricted to limited use and cannot be used for snow removal operations. Military vehicles that are registered before January 1, 2019 can continue to be contracted. If you have any questions about conducting a snow removal service inspection or filling out the vehicle checklist, contact your residency administrator or your district maintenance manager.